a little while ago, I... Hi. A little while ago, I watched a Sunday night movie, uh, Godzilla. Um, I got this free uh, with a newspaper a while ago. And um, I hadn't seen it before. I've seen very few of the Godzilla films before, really only the uh, two American versions, and I think maybe one of the earlier Japanese ones. So I was interested to see where it all started, and I was really shocked by how grim the original story is. I mean, we know the basics, that there is a nuclear test, and something starts ravaging the coastline of Japan, and uh, it's named after a folk myth of some great creature and it turns out to be a, a giant dinosaur that can breathe fire and causes all kinds of devastation and stamps all over Tokyo but the film takes it very seriously um, it's well known as well that the uh, underlying message of the film was the horror of war the the horrible fallout of war with Godzilla himself being analogous to the uh, bombing of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and this is played through to its logical endpoint in the movie. Um, we see little vignettes of devastation. We see hospitals filled with the dead and dying and, and doctors unable to cope with the, the appalling tragedy. We see one woman sheltering with her child in the, the corner of the building as they're crying. And, and she says to her child, don't worry, we'll be with daddy in heaven soon as the building is smashed to pieces and falls on top of them. And for those who are think of Godzilla as being a fun monster movie or camp silliness, it's really impressive to see how seriously this is taken and how um, something that is so goofy, a giant dinosaur tramping all over a city, can be rendered into a very solemn and shocking story through very skillful direction editing and everyone just treating the material with the attitude it deserves. It's worth noting that at the time, Nagasaki and Hiroshima were nine years earlier. Nine. That's twice the length of time between now and 9-11. So that gives you some idea of how fresh those scars were. The, uh, the day is saved at the end of the movie by a scientist who's developed the Oxygen Destroyer, which appears to be a marble that you can drop in water, um, but it skeletonizes all animal life in water. And he's obviously horrified by this, because like Oppenheimer and Einstein before him, he's appalled by the idea that this will be used as a weapon of war, and has been keeping it secret so that he's able to, in some way, develop a, a way for it to not be... Uh, used to as a way of potentially dominating uh, the world or causing untold loss of civilian life. However, at the end of the movie, there is no other option. They have to deploy the oxygen destroyer to kill Godzilla, lest he devastate the entire world. So the scientist simply destroys all his work, destroys all his research. I believe he burns his house down, and after deploying the oxygen destroyer, he kills himself because he knows that he cannot allow the secret of this appalling weapon to continue to exist. Because it's because of that that Godzilla came about in the first place. The exact same thinking caused this horrible devastation. It's a remarkably thoughtful and moral film. It's, uh, it's impressive in how it sort of patches together different viewpoints. And uh, we see there, there, are, there are a number of main characters. We see people off on an island. We see sighted somewhere else and there's there's all these different story threads which are very easily bound together in this in this story and i was the all its reputation i was really genuinely impressed by it uh the visual effects it's 1954 but they do stand up remarkably well and godzilla isn't immediately obvious as a man in a suit so i think it stands up pretty well it's a it's a very fine piece of science fiction it's a fascinating glimpse of uh, the the current affairs and the current thinking of uh, 1954 in Japan and maybe even at the world at large. And I think it, it stands the test of time as a, a great cautionary tale, as well as a, a very fine horror story. <laughs>